what would you want to ask the pm of india if you get a chance to interview him on your watch and with your seeming encouragement a toxin has been injected into the veins of our society that is dividing our people on grounds of religion is this not something that you would like to fix let's put it very bluntly indian muslims who are being made to feel inferior who are being made to feel as if they have no rights to be here and make any claim on this country the way a hindu can are you not troubled do you think maybe indira gandhi was in the worst pm ever best and worst are very relative things i think the emergency was obviously a serious problem for the country many people say you are the best pm kerala never had are you ready to fix it look I, it's again not an individual call alone i'm getting a lot of people demanding that i take an active interest in that ee maharajathile oru cheriya vibhagam janangal maatram samsarikkunnathana ende vaashu pakshe njangalude maatra sajeevam janangalude Where do where the all the liberals go when it's election day in India? You know the conservatives win, but liberals are all over social media before election. Well, I hope that they're showing up to vote. I mean, that's the part of the challenge. There are two things that I would demand of liberals. One is that they actually put their feet where their words are. They have good ideas, as you say. Many of them say some extremely interesting things on social media. I'd like to see them register to vote. Get more like-minded people to register to vote. I'd like to see them knocking on doors. and telling people why it's important to vote for the liberal agenda if they did that they might get the kind of country they want what would you want to ask the pm of india if you get a chance to interview him three questions yeah you know, there's so much to ask about you know i i would i would obviously not want to sort of confront him the way poor karan thapa did so he walked away from the first minute i would rather talk to him in a way that he can relate to and say look you're somebody who likes to talk about a good lot of positive messages for india you talk about technology you talk about growth you talk about india being a developed country in 25 years are you not conscious of the extent to which on your watch and with your seeming encouragement a toxin has been injected into the veins of our society that is dividing our people on grounds of religion is this not something that you would like to fix rather than exacerbate second how can it be that you have often said including to me i might add that you don't see in your religious distinctions you work for all indians equally and you said all my development projects are implemented for everybody equally but can't you see that there are some people and let's put it very bluntly indian muslims who are being made to feel inferior who are being made to feel as if they have no rights to be here and make any claim on this country the way a hindu can are you not troubled when you say that they are all equal Are you not troubled when people who owe allegiance to you make speeches attacking such people? I am troubled when a Muslim friend of mine says that her seven-year-old son was told by playmates in their building in Noida, "My parents say I can't play with you because you're a Muslim." That never used to happen in India where I grew up in. Do you feel a sense of responsibility, Mr. Prime Minister, that this is happening in your country? Third question: It's very good to talk about macroeconomic growth and and per capita income going up and everything else. but have you understood that there are people who voted for you 10 years ago in the hope that you would create an economy that would give them jobs and they still don't have a job how do you feel about the fact that people who used to buy a certain number of vegetables in the market 2 years ago can no longer afford to buy the same vegetables for their food how do you feel about the fact that whereas the economy is growing the income of people at the bottom of the pyramid has not grown tell us what you want to do about this so these are three questions Do you think maybe Indira Gandhi was in the worst PM ever? Look, best and worst are very relative things. I think the emergency was obviously a serious problem for the country because it involved a lot of denial of human rights, those compulsory forced uh, vasectomizations and so on, were unforgivable, uh, demolitions of people's homes, a lot of which sadly we have seen happening without the declaration of an emergency under the present government. The bulldozer era is now, it's not during Indira Gandhi's time. So I would say that um, there were many many uh, things that I have criticized that period for the emergency was one thing and the other was the deinstitutionalization uh, of many of the things that have been built up as strong institutions and the third to some degree was her um reliance on her sons to the expense of the detriment of other qualified people now with, with Rajiv Gandhi I believe he largely lucked out he was a visionary a prime minister But Sanjay Gandhi, I don't know whether he would have lucked out because he uh, did some very destructive things. Ultimately, merit should have been allowed to prevail, and that's the one criticism I still hold. But I would praise Indira Gandhi very highly for what she did to reshape the geography and the geopolitics of the subcontinent. 
her adroit managing of the entire 1970-71 crisis with Pakistan that resulted in the liberation of Bangladesh, and her ability to take the message of poverty abolition to the people and make it a mass issue. All of those are very important contributions she made. What stops you from swapping a career in politics for fiction writing? No, I tell you what, I mean, I would love to write fiction, but I've taken this on for good or for ill. And I think you'd be wrong to sort of dismount, as it were, in mid-write. The time will come and it won't be when I'm being carried out feet first. The time will come when I want to uh, step aside and write full time. It's not here yet. I'll know when the time comes. Otherwise, the voters will decide to return me yeah. to the w world of literature. A prolific reader, being a prolific reader, what are, the, what are you reading currently? Yes. Not reading enough, I must admit. My last read was for this festival. I read the uh, Pachi Karkari book on Captain Krishna Nair, which I thought was actually very good to capture a dream. Very well written, very easy. I mean, some of the business details may not appeal to everyone. But the life story of a visionary leader is fascinating to come across. Uh, before that, um, I was dipping into a number of short books, particularly people sending me books to blurb. So I, I'll pass over those, because those you can see my blurbs, and you'll see that some of them have been crafted uh, fairly quickly because I was doing a favor to someone. There's no time to read it fully. The last full book that I truly enjoyed and would talk about would be uh, Rushdie's Victory City. Uh, as a story of the Vijayanagar Empire, it was a departure for him in that he's essentially written about North Indian themes. And here he got a South Indian theme and I thought did a, a wonderful job of it. I think in many ways, we're seeing Rushdie back at the peak of his power. There were a couple of novels that were not amongst his best. This one is once again at the top of the drawer. Many people say you are the best CM Kerala never had. Are you ready to fix it? Look, I, it's again not an individual call alone. I'm getting a lot of people demanding that I take an active interest in that. Uh, and the truth is, right now, I have to focus on my Lok Sabha seat, uh, not only because that's where I am, and I'm hoping the party will give me my ticket once again, but also because there is still an unfinished job to be done in Tiruvannathapuram, which I'm trying to do, and where I believe I've made some very good beginnings that I would like to see through. But the time may come. I mean, the next election in the state is a couple of years away. And if there is a widespread feeling that I can make a difference to the fortunes of the liberal side of the equation, the UDF side, um, I would be very, very happy to, uh, uh, to get involved uh, to the extent that people want me to. Ultimately, in democracy, the people decide. It's not merely the ambitions of individual leaders that count. About you, as a, I mean, I think sometimes people forget that you're a human being and you have emotions because you have this charisma all over you. As a father, are you a proud father? Do you miss your sons? You, you I miss my sons terribly. Uh, I'm very close to them, thank God, and, and, and we do keep in touch by WhatsApp. But it's not the same thing, because whenever they try and call me at a convenient time for them, I'm in some meeting or rally or public event and I can't take the call. When I call them, they're at work or on the subway or heading to the office. And they also have small children to look after uh, during the weekend. So we don't speak as often as I would like, and I, I, I regret that very much. Uh, also, they live very far away, so I can only see them a couple of times a year. One's in New York, the other's in Washington. But I'm very proud of them. I think genuinely that in what they're doing, they're outstanding. Uh, Ishan, my son, Ishan Tharoor, has a diplomatic column in the Washington Post, which I'm so pleased when people come up to me saying, are you Ishan Tharoor's father? He writes brilliantly, and he does. He's a very distinctive voice in the foreign policy space. And Kanish is a little less publicly known now, though he was the first one to publish a book of short story. He's now working behind the scenes. He's a senior editor of Foreign Affairs magazine in New York. And there I meet very distinguished uh, people whose articles he is basically rewriting as the editor and guiding them towards what he believes it ought to be. And they speak very highly of his editorial skills. And I think they're both, frankly, better at what they do than I would have been at their age. So I'm very proud of them.